you know, like a professional golfer who I think is very good. They don't have any money, but they have a lot of talent. I'll say, here's the deal. I did it with a number of people. Here's the deal, what I want to do. Professional golfer, I play golf. I play very nice. Did you see the picture of me, the horrible picture with the stomach out to here? That was... So what I do is I'm putting up today a picture of me actually, what I actually look like, hitting a ball, smashing the frickin' ball. And you'll see, quite... I wouldn't say slim. I wouldn't say slim, but not bad. Jeff actually watched me make a hole in one. Can you believe that? this? I actually said I was the best golfer of all the rich people. Uh, that's, to be to be exact. And then I got a hole in one. So it was sort of cool. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, he shanked it. <laughs> Oh my god, I got that on video. <laughs> Donald Trump has always been a notorious golf cheat, and now everybody at the Trump Bedminster Golf Club knows it. George Conway's Psycho Pack's latest billboard is sure to put Trump off his round. How important is it you, for you to win? You're worth billions. Like, at what point does it, like, doesn't matter to him, but it does. You know, I played with Clinton when he was president. He cheated. He cheated, but in a completely different way. Like, he would take what we call billigans, like he'd hit a shot, and then he'd hit five or six more because he was confounded by golf. But he wasn't trying to make you lose. He'd always play his first ball, but he was just trying to get the game. It's like a guy that goes to the bank to steal the pen versus the guy that goes to steal the money. He really needs to win, and I've never seen anything quite like it. Competitors arriving for day two of the contest on Sunday morning were surprised, although not exactly shocked, to see Trump's name at the top of the leaderboard with a five-point lead over the overnight leader. The thing is, Trump wasn't even there for the first day of the tournament. He cheats, and everyone knows that he cheats, so it's a real litmus test for how willing MAGA Republicans are to lie for him, and how willing his supporters are to just go along with whatever he says. His lies are getting increasingly desperate, and the Dems recently are doing a much better job of going low. Kamala did a phenomenal job of rattling Trump in the debate, and he is still so salty about it. You know they said, I'm the GOAT. Mm -hmm. in debates, because I had a lot of debates and I became president. You know, when you win, you don't really necessarily have to do it a second time, so we'll see, but uh, we had a, uh, I thought we had a great debate last what, night. Thank you very much. What would need to change for you to agree to a second debate? Would you want different rules? Would you want a different format? Well, you know, when you, when you don't win, it's like a fighter. When a fighter has a bad fight, gets knocked out, or loses the fight, the first thing he says is, we want a rematch. So, we won the debate according to every poll, every single poll. I think that, uh, are we going to do a rematch? I just don't know. But we'll think about it. Would you still do the one on NBC on September 25th? You, you proposed that. Are you still committed yeah, to that? I would do NBC. I do uh, Fox too. I do Fox too. But right now we have to determine whether or not we even want to do it. We had a great night last night. And you see by the poll numbers, it was really fantastic. Thank you very much, everybody. Did she get the questions? Did you think? So I hear she got the questions, and I also heard she had something in the ear, a little something in the ear. No, Kamala, do this. Say it this way, Kamala. Okay, be quiet. Too many people watch. The more opportunities we find to expose Donald Trump for the fragile, pathetic loser that he is, the less able he is to keep his composure long enough to hold a crowd, let alone win a debate or an election. Have you ever seen this guy? Like, when he's on stage, he, like kind of meanders over, you know, can't really walk well, and he goes over to the flag and he like hugs the flag, and I love the flag, but it's a weird thing he does, right? But while, while he's hugging the flag, you know what he's doing? He's ripping away our freedoms. That's what he's all about. Surprising absolutely nobody, Trump clearly did not change after he was shot. Despite the media narrative that Trump was more serene and a changed man, it's very clear he is the same anti-democratic, aspiring authoritarian that we've always known him to be. Even though he pretended to be somber at the RNC for about 20 minutes before quickly pivoting back into campaign mode and attacking a frequent list of enemies, on the trail since then, he's been the same old Trump. And all of this pandering that he does, especially when he hugs the flag. It's very strange because at the same time, he's taking away all of our rights. This myth that Republicans care about freedom isn't rooted in reality, and they certainly don't care about democracy. If they don't cheat, we win this state easily, okay? They cheat. They have no shame. They cheat. Do you understand that, you crooked people? They're the most crooked. They cheat. They cheated in the last election. 
and they're going to cheat in this election, but we're going to get them. That was Trump at a campaign rally in Minnesota, a state that he doesn't really have a chance of winning, but he's claiming that if he doesn't win, it's because Democrats cheated. He's not saying this because he thinks it's going to be a close race and there's a chance he might lose. He's saying this to prime the pump for future anti-democratic actions like we saw on January 6th. If you think for a second that if Trump loses in November, he's going to go down without a fight, you're crazy. Christians get out and vote just this time. You won't have to do it anymore. Four more years, you know what? It'll be fixed, it'll be fine. You won't have to vote anymore, my beautiful Christians. I love you, Christians. I'm a Christian. I love you. Get out. You got to get out and vote. In four years, you don't have to vote again. We'll have it fixed so good you're not going to have to vote. They've already been laying the foundation for challenges to the election, more anti-democratic schemes. Who knows if we'll see fake electors again? You'd think they'd learn their lesson, but I don't think these people are capable of remorse. And you can see that in comments like this. Democrats say the former president is trying to take the reins of the entire democratic system here with these comments. You're laughing. What, what do you believe he's trying to say? Yeah. What's the truth? He's trying to tell the Christian community and anybody else who's listening the nightmare that we're experiencing will soon be over. Give me four more years and I'm going to write this ship called America and pass it on to the next generation. We will have democracy, uh, God willing, <laughs> for a very long time in this country. Of course, Lindsey Graham, the most pathetic person in the Senate, runs to Trump's defense. What else was he supposed to mean by that? How are we supposed to interpret you won't have to vote again? This is the same person who said he would be dictator for a day. I'm tired of people bending over backwards to justify the things that he says. These are things that are genuine threats to democracy and our political system. And then you have people in his camp justifying it, defending it, making excuses for him. As if you don't have examples of things that he would do that would jeopardize our democracy. They all pretended to be outraged by it, but then as soon as the impeachment inquiry came, then all of a sudden they were on his side again. And this reflects a broader problem in the Republican party. They don't care about democracy. They don't care about our political system. They don't care about election integrity. All they care about is power for themselves. That's their one true motivating factor. And if they get it and hold on to it, especially if Trump's at the helm, they will do anything they can to hold on to that. Even if that means completely trashing our democratic system. He tried to stay last time. And this time they're already making the case that he should be able to run again. That is if we even have elections. But let's say that we do. You can see that in some conservative commentary. They've laid out the foundation for extending term limits, arguing that the Constitution really only says two consecutive terms, not two terms total. Of course, everybody who isn't in the MAGA camp knows that's ridiculous. It's always been just two terms, even if they aren't consecutive. You will see more and more MAGA Republicans make the case that it's just two consecutive terms. So they will push for Trump to run for a third term. But what does this ultimately mean? What does this say about him, the Republican Party, Party and our democracy. Take a look at this. Donald Trump is attacking our election system. He's attacking our, our, our very system, our democratic institutions. That's that's an act of a, of a traitor. Either I win or, or it will be stolen from me. To say that before an election, Jessica, anyone who says that, any candidate, and I've been a candidate, any candidate who says to voters, either I'm going to win or the other side's going to cheat, those are the words of a traitor, a traitor to this country. This is former Congressman Joe Walsh. He was a Republican, but Trump drove him out of the party. This isn't somebody I would even typically look to for political guidance or analysis, but I do think in this instance, what he's saying is right. Because again, Minnesota is not a state Trump has a chance of winning. And he knows that, of course he knows that, but he's doing this to preemptively create a scenario where he can contest the results of an election. And he's doing this more and more because he's falling in the polls now that Kamala Harris is the presumptive Democratic nominee. Trump is somebody who has hit a ceiling in polling. He's not bringing in new people. Voters already know who he is and they know the problems with him. So Kamala Harris, offers voters something relatively new, a different choice. It's not a Biden, it's not a Trump, it's not a Clinton, and it's not an Obama. Those are families and names that have been in the White House 
for the last few decades. People want change and they wanted a different option and they reflected that in polling. That's why you're seeing Kamala Harris surge ahead of Trump in popularity and favorability. So the Trump campaign is in full meltdown mode, especially because they're already regretting picking J.D. Vance as the nominee. They didn't think that would matter because they thought they were running against Biden. But now that Biden's out, they have to completely redo and overhaul their campaign because voters know he is full of The only people that support Trump are his hardcore loyalists. Even his own family doesn't like him. Take a look. The president's sister, retired federal judge Marianne Trump Ferry, was recorded by her niece Mary slamming her famous brother. Change of stories, a lack of preparation, the lying, the holy sh All he wants to do is appeal to his base. He has no principles. I'm none. None. Donald's out for Donald, period. Trump has no principles. You can see it right there. Of course, he'll say and do anything if it puts him in power. But what's really dangerous is the prospect of a Trump presidency with Project 2025 looming. He can try to distance himself from it, but it's not going to work because people on his staff and who were in his White House helped write it. His current national press secretary helped put it together. The idea that Trump is completely removed from Project 2025 and what's inside is ludicrous. And it sets up a good opportunity for Democrats to point this out. He's told us what he wants to do. Y'all go crack open that whole Project 2025 thing. Not only is Trump a stale option, not only is Trump anti-democratic, here's what happens if Trump gets elected. You can see the policies here in this playbook. They're gonna take away your freedoms. They're going to make it harder to get an abortion. They're going to undo all of the good climate accomplishments that Biden and Harris put together. They're going to change the tax code so the rich pay even less while you pay more and so much more. It's basically a complete corporate overhaul of our federal government and our system to benefit the wealthy, his donors. So if you wanna preserve democracy, if you wanna preserve our system, System, if you want to fight for our rights and if you want economic fairness, there are plenty of reasons to not vote Trump. But if you want to preserve our democracy, our system, the basic foundation on which our country was founded, it's very clear. Trump is antithetical to the entire ideal of our country.